Okay, great. So thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Caitlin Curry Allen. I think everyone here knows me and I'm the principal here at RKES. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about the college going process um, in California specifically. So throughout your, your, um, your child's time here at RKES, you'll be able to learn about the process for helping your child be ready for college. We know that college is a really long ways away. It's more than 10 years for most of our students. Um, but doing really small things now um, can help in the long run. And so while we're here at RKES, we're going to really focus in on college aspirations. We want all of our students to be able to see themselves in college and know they can be successful in any post-secondary option they choose. And more than anything, that is the most important thing that we can do for our elementary school students. They can see themselves on a college campus. They can see themselves being a graduate of college because that's gonna really motivate them in middle school and high school. All right, so I just wanted to give sort of an overview of the sessions that we'll be giving here at RKES over the course of your child's education. So our college knowledge sessions, um, looking ahead expectations for our children's futures, why college, and that's the one we're doing today. We're also gonna be talking about developing academic skills and promoting achievement, changes, how to make successful transitions, which is really important as students leave for college. And then finally, we'll do an introduction into paying for college. And um, sort of the nitty gritty will be done a lot more in middle school and high school as students get closer to that time. All right, and then finally, I just really wanna say thank you for coming tonight. I just really wanna commend you for being interested in learning about your child's education at this early age. Um, as your child's primary caretakers, you are the expert on your child and you have the most significant role um, and helping your child gain educational and career success. So regardless, if you went to college, if you know the ins and outs of going to college, that doesn't matter. You, your participation, your support, and your encouragement is really crucial. The counselors at your child's high school, the teachers at your child's high school, are they're gonna be the experts and play the major role, but you're the expert in your kid. And so um, we wanna make sure that we honor and hold that. Okay. All right, so we'll start with a couple of quotes. Um, just to get some more voices in the room, could um, Miss KJ, could you read the first quote for us? Of course, it says, once social change begins, it cannot be reversed. You cannot uneducate the person who has learned to read. You cannot humiliate the person who feels pride. You cannot oppress the people who are not afraid anymore. Thank you. And that quote was by Cesar Chavez, who is a labor leader or was a labor leader in California. We celebrate Cesar Chavez Day at the end of March every single year. And we really, I really wanted to bring this quote to us, this idea that um, you can't uneducate a person. That is a very, very important and precious gift that someone has. And so, and that's the key to social change and to making this world a better place. I have one more quote. Uh, Mr. Darian, will you read this one for us? Sure. Um, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world, Nelson Mandela. Thank you. And Nelson Mandela, um, the first black president of South Africa. He um, also was really fundamental in um, uh, dism dismantling apartheid in South Africa. And so um, he believes that education is the most powerful tool which you can use to change the world. The word weapon is, I don't love that as much, but very, very powerful. Okay, so um, today we're gonna be learning about benefits of college, key requirements to attending a California college or university, and then finally the most important things that you can do now to help your child succeed. We'll have an opener, which we've already done, we're gonna do benefits of college, college requirements in California, preparing for college, we'll have time for questions and answers, and then we'll have a closing. 
All right. So going into the college benefits. So why is college important? So first of all, they're paying jobs. So um, college graduates receive a higher salary than students who only have a high school diploma. In addition, many jobs require some kind of specialized training that only a college program can give, such as career and technical um, positions, doctorate or professional degrees. Um, in order to be a um, teacher, you have to have a special credential, you have to have a bachelor's degree and attend college. Um, to be an instructional assistant, you had to have a bachelor's degree. Um, you have to have certain levels of training. And so there are most um, professional jobs in this world do require a college um, education. College degree also gives you flexibility with what career you pursue. If you have a college degree, you have choices. And if you don't have one, you don't have as many choices. And so um, even if your child is potentially unsure what they want to do, having that college degree can always serve as um, a way to um, have options in their life. Then college education equals more job security. Okay, so aligned with better paying jobs, the college degree equals upward mobility. So over time, people with college degrees will make more money with every year that they're experienced. So that at the beginning of their career, they might not be making that much, but by the time they are older, they have much more wealth. It also equals a better future for you and your family. And on average, college graduates earn $1.3 million more over their lifetime than high school graduates, which is a lot of money, as you all know. Okay. One um, benefit of college that I think is overlooked sometimes is this idea of family cycle and tradition. So research shows that if a child's parents attended college, that child will be more likely to attend college. And so if your student is the first person in their family who will be attending a college, they could start or continue this tradition, which would increase the, um, the education of the entire family, not just that one student. So education is so powerful because it can change the lives of family members from one generation to the next. I know that my parents were the very first people in their families to ever attend college. And because they had attended college, I was encouraged from a very young age that I need to go to college because that's what my parents did. Um, and I know that I'll encourage my son to go to college because I went as well. I also know that we can all probably speak to um, the college experience as being really wonderful because of its social elements. So in college, it's a really wonderful place to meet individuals from all walks of life. Um, people from all over the world will attend your child's college or university, and it's re a really great way to broaden your horizon. Can also expand their circle of friends for the same reason, just meeting lots of really interesting people. Creating a support network and learning from professionals in the field you're interested in. You um, in college, you have access to so many professionals, so many professors who can really, really help you learn more. And I'm sure every single one of us in this room has a story of at least one professor that they got to know really closely and learned from um, that, they, that they still are in contact with today. You can also participate in study abroad programs in college, which are really fun. I did a study abroad program in Peru, and um, you can study in a different country for a semester, a quarter, a year, learning the language. Um, many times there's a financial aid and scholarships available to help the student make that transition. There's also service learning work, which um, means that you can volunteer your time in projects around the country in the world. Um, and it's an opportunity to see a different side of the world and give back to the communities. 
And colleges also offer really great opportunities to do internships, which can lead to jobs, opportunities, educational experiences. Um, and a lot of times, certain um, companies have relationships with colleges so that, you know, if your child wasn't at college, they wouldn't, they might not have even heard about that opportunity. And then finally, and from my experience, potentially the most important, is that college really served me at least as a gradual transition into the real world. Um, you know, I was 18, I went to college, I was kind of on my own, but not 100% on my own. I still had my parents, I still had people looking over me, but it allowed me to enjoy myself while learning a profession. It helped me take time really figure out what I wanted to do as a career. By taking classes, I could take classes in lots of different subjects and learn more about what I wanted to do with my life. And I learned really valuable skills while investing in my future, like learning how to do laundry by myself, like cooking, like balancing a checkbook, like managing my time and my finances. Those are all very important skills for successful adulthood that I learned in college. Did, I did laundry by myself before. I mean, the other one's not. Okay. Make that clear. All right. Are there any questions about the benefits of college um, before we transition into the next section, which is college requirements? Or anything to add? Okay. So, College requirements, and before I present this piece, I do want to say that um, I'm not going to get into a lot of the nitty gritty just because um, that is something that's done in later middle school and college. I am going to, yeah, some of the best friends I made are in college. Absolutely, me too. Um, but I am going to give you an overview just so that you can kind of see basically what is required um, so that you have a clear picture going into, um, into your child's future. Okay, so in order to attend college, every single uh, institution or university is different by what they require, but the basic requirements are usually the same usually have to have taken certain courses. So for the subject requirements, students in California need to take 15 what are called A through G classes, um, which I'll show on the next slide. Basically, they're the courses that are eligible for the um, University of California and California State University systems. Most uh, California high schools offer these classes. You also have to usually have a certain GPA or grade point average. So that's usually anywhere from a 2.0, which is about a C average, to a 3.0, which is a B average. Um, and that should say GPA, I'm sorry. Um, and so this starts counting when the student is in the ninth grade. And so grades that students have right now do not affect their ability to get into college. I think that's really important to know grades that students have right now are just tools for progress and no one sees them beyond you and their teachers. Um, it counts in ninth grade. So we've got a long time to go before we have to worry about that. Usually students have to take the SAT or the ACT. However, because of COVID, um, the University of California systems actually paused this test for a while but it could be back by the time your child is um, in or applying for college. So just know that that might be something they need to do. Then there's usually a personal essay or the University of California system calls it insight questions. And it's a chance to, uh, for the student to demonstrate in writing what really sets them apart from their peers. They get to tell a story about themselves um, that, you know, gives the, the people who are accepting applic or applicants, it's like an idea of how that person is off of just the numbers on the page. I did not put on here, but I should. 
most places require teacher recommendations as well. And so that's something you might wanna start talking to your students about at some point, just building really positive relationships with their teachers um, so that you know, they, can, they feel comfortable asking for a letter of recommendation when they're in high school. So this is the list of the A through G requirements in California. And I won't go into you know, every single subject that they have to take, but really they're taking certain classes that will help prepare them with the prerequisite knowledge to be successful in college. And I wanted to point out that Rise Poyang High School, oh, I must not have refreshed, refreshed the page. I had a picture of RKHS. Rise Poyang High School offers all of these courses. And so um, they are uh, really well equipped to set your child up for success in college. Okay. Then I know this is also very important to some of our families. You might be asking yourself the question, what if my child isn't a U.S. citizen? Can they go to college? The answer is absolutely yes, they can go to college. There are a few additional things that um, undocumented students need to do in order to go to college, but that's why your college counselor is there um, in high school to really help and support them. So there are a few things. Um, there's their California and there are federal programs that can help your child attend and pay for college um, if they are not a U.S. citizen. Um, you might have heard of Act of ACA or the DREAM Act. So those are both there. There's also an assembly bill in California called AB 540. And all of these help undocumented students attend um, colleges. So um, that is really good news. And I'm really excited to live in a state like California, which offers clear paths to college for students who um, are undocumented. Now the very last slide that I, or the very last section that I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time here because I think that this is um, really key information and it's how to prepare for college now. You know, we've got kids who are four to eight years old. What should we be doing right now to make sure that our kid is set up for success um, 10 years from now? It seems so far. I promise you it's not that much and it's really simple. Number one is talk to your student about college. Make sure that they can see themselves as a successful college student. That's why on Fridays last year, we allowed students to wear either their dragon shirt or a college t-shirt because we wanted them to start feeling like they are someone who can go to college and be successful in college. Um, talk to them about when you attended college or when a loved one attended college. I know that there are family members, there are people who have talked to them about how much fun you had and how great of an experience it was, that that becomes something that they wanna do. You could also take a day trip to UCLA or CSUN or USC and let them play in the lawn. It's free to go just play on the lawn at these colleges. So help them see themselves existing on a campus like this. I have a really strong memory of my mom taking me to a college in Virginia when I was a child. Um, my aunt worked there and I just remember seeing the buildings and they were beautiful and we went to the library and I just I wanted to be one of those kids. It was really powerful for me and that can be a really powerful experience for our kids now too. Tell them that they are capable of anything, that they are intelligent and that they will be successful no matter what. That confidence goes such a long way and having them hear that at school and at home is really powerful. And then finally, set the expectation that they can and will attend college or a post-secondary education um, program, you know, a vocational school as well that, yep, absolutely can do that. And if they want to do that, they will do that. Um, that's something that was set for me and I know for a lot of us here and it was, it, it changes things. So that was great. Second most important thing, and 
maybe also just as important is reading. So read with your child and encourage them to read on their own as often as possible. So a student has to learn 3,000 new words each academic year in order to be successful for the next grade. And reading is the very best way to acquire vocabulary and language and reading often and in progressively larger quantities will help prepare students for how difficult school will be in the future. These are real pictures of real textbooks in college. And it doesn't matter what the student is studying, if they're studying math or if they're studying art or music. I know Ms. KJ was a music major. I know Mr. Darian studied French. They had to read huge textbooks like this. And so reading is so important. Um, in addition, after third grade, schools stop teaching students explicitly how to read. Instead, students begin learning or begin reading in order to learn. So to learn content, to learn social studies, science, math, they have to read these textbooks. So be su successful in any class from math to cosmetology, to history, students have to be proficient readers. Um, and you're gonna see RKES really focus in on this next year when we return to campus. Um, but just reading is so important and I can't emphasize it enough. That is probably the biggest thing you can do to prepare your child for college. Well, one of the two biggest things. Another really important thing is social emotional development. So successful college students are able and self-motivated to make personal choices and good decisions. Um, using the ruler at home, including the mood meter and the meta moment can pay off really big in the long run when students are able to emotionally regulate and manage their own minds. So the ability to recognize, understand, label, express, and regulate one's own emotions um, are essential parts of being a resilient and capable college student. Um, college is hard and your students are going to um, have challenges that they've never had before, but the ability to like know how to manage that is invaluable. And then help your student, or it, they'll also help your student make good choices, manage difficult situations, like how to respond when they fail, because they will, because we're human and we all fail at some point. How to have a hard test, how to manage that, or how to manage conflict. And so that social emotional development piece is really important. And then finally, very important, is place all the stress about paying for college, SAT scores, entrance exams, fear about where if your child doesn't get into college or what are you gonna do when they leave home? Cause I'm really sad about that already. And my kid's seven months old. So place all that stress and put it in a box and think about it later. None of that stuff is gonna help your child get into college right now. The three things that I mentioned before are is what's gonna help your child. So you don't need to worry about any of that stuff now. With a strong foundation of reading, emotional intelligence, and the motivation to attend college, your child's gonna be set up for incredible success. Those three things are more important than anything else. Discussion about details like this, like financial aid and how to apply and all of that stuff comes much later. Older elementary school students, we start talking a little bit about saving for college. Um, middle school, they start thinking about grades and building those study skills. But high school is when really this work is done. And so I'm gonna ask, just put it in a box and worry about it later. All right. And those are the only um, well, those are the most important things for our introduction to college knowledge workshop series. Um, are there any questions or comments that you all would like to bring? Um, I can do the best I can with answering them. And we've also got four really awesome college graduates here who can help too.
All right. Well, if you do have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, our next presentation about college will be next year. So really the idea is we do a couple of them every year just to make sure that all of our families have the knowledge to do so. And we'll really be talking about um, developing those academic skills um, and promoting achievement for students um, so that they can get that mindset as they get older in elementary school. All right. Well, thank you all so much and have a wonderful evening. And I will post this recording as well as the slide deck on Parent Square for other parents to be able to watch later. Um, and Miss Lee, you can refer back to this if you'd like to um, you know, review the slides and, and um, review some of those requirements that I sort of skipped through. All right, bye everyone.